Hello, welcome to something a little different. This is going to be episode one of a more in-depth Ratropolis run where I don't... Like the, the idea here is I'm going to talk through and explain every single choice that I make. I'm going to be pausing a lot. We're going to talk out every single option and what goes through my mind to give you a little bit of a better insight into how I play the game, how I make my decisions, and how you can maybe make some decisions for yourself. So this isn't going to be me trying to take things that are interesting and new, or me trying to like, be more of a like off-topic discussing whatever comes to my mind. This is going to be solely focused on the game itself. I'm going to make, I don't know how many episodes of this, I think at least six, one for each character to show you how I, like, uh, no, I think I, I think probably three, one for each map, because right now I think the minute to minute as the characters is a little less interesting. I mean, if this if this series does well, I'll make 18. I'll make one for each character on each map. How about that? And so, you know, if I see higher than normal support for this, we'll do all six characters on each of the maps. We'll talk about every single thing I think about on each map and things like that. This is just going to be normal wave 30 runs, but I think that... If, again, if the series is enjoyable, if you like this, if this does well, I will probably come back to this with over-explaining hard once I learn how to play hard and see how it goes. Yeah. I, I think that normal mode, for the most part, will apply to most things. I will not- I, I don't think I'll ever do a nightmare mode over-explained, unless you guys really pour out a lot of support and really want to see it, because a normal mode over-explained- or a nightmare mode over-explained would be th like three hours of commentary, just like focused commentary, which is hard for me to do. But you know, I, I'm willing to give it a try if it's something that's interesting. Anyway, we're gonna play the merchant. I'm going to start on the desert here and let's begin. So right out the bat, I'll talk as the merchant. I think that, what do you, what do you wanna do as the merchant? Your end game is the merchant. You don't have anything in, in particular. There's no special tricks that you can do with your hero abilities, but you can be a little more aggressive in the early shop because of that 25% passive gold. So at the gate, uh, let's talk order of cards. We got, uh, here, let me, let me I'm, just, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna talk about the starting cards. I'm gonna go very, very, uh, very, very in-depth, right? I'm not going to tell you what all the cards do. I have card review videos for that. However, oh, you can't open the card bag while it's paused. Interesting. You look at, it's, it's very, the early game is simple, right? You start out with nine population once you put your house down. The most important thing to do is make sure that you don't, uh, like, brick yourself, which is a term that I'm going to use for basically meaning making it so that you have to just sit there and there's nothing you can do in the early game. In the early game in particular, it's really bad to do that. You want to get momentum built off of the first three or four waves by building up your income through your starting cards. Because these starting cards, when you're only paying 20 to redraw, are very profitable. So the most important thing is do not play house first and also don't play house, like don't play grain house. If you draw an opening hand that's like grain gather militia house guards you need to redraw that hand play grain and redraw that hand i guess there, there's a lot of there's only a few permutations you can see in your opening hand essentially you want to play cheese if there's more than one cheese in your hand and you want to play potter first i don't play gather because i think you get more value out of gather having it draw you cards so we're in this in this case we drew potter you can play grain you have to ask yourself if you play this house is it going to be okay it's actually going to not be okay well, it's going to be maybe okay. I think it's okay to take the risk because it's not the end of the world if it isn't, right? I only had to wait a moment there. And that's that's one of the, the cases you'll see a lot where you have 38 gold. And you just have to wait the extra like five seconds. Tax comes in, I believe every five seconds is my number. But the early game, I play out all of my grain. This is the main thing that will probably change if I move into hard mode. I don't think you're going to be able to live off of one militia. However, we're not in hard mode. Play out four grain, more if you're playing military, but we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And just keep the four grain going for the first wave. However, basically, as you've probably seen, one militia will survive and clear this wave, but... 
what you, what you put down to block wave two is a little is up to interpretation, right? Wave two is just four plague rats. All right, let's talk treasure chest. I've, of the five rewards from the treasure chest, I've talked about this a little bit in the past. Your first treasure chest is probably your most important one. You never take gold from the first one. I hope that is not surprising. Gold is a really... 20 gold from this is very bad. Later in the game, you can get away with it. I believe... So... The best thing to get is a house, I think. Unless, or a really, really strong card from this. These cards are mediocre at best. Land tax scales up, but I don't like it. And warehouse, I have no production buildings and it requires a bit more setup. So I'm not gonna take either of these. The only one that's even worth consideration here is cheese market. However, cheese market is a very minor benefit. So I'm going to delete a card here. This is something that I would not do if I was not the, if I, if I don't, I feel confident in my economy to remove grain. I think that it's okay. You sh I should be able to, excuse me, I should be able to get away with it. Because this first shop is going to be cheaper, as well as the income is already at around 800 gold at this point. So first shop, this is arguably the most important shop in the game. I think that you, always want to buy this wall to get the fir that uh, first event that you get and then you just take the cards that are good alongside it in this case i'm going to take market because market is uh, arguably one of the best buildings in the game and i will take attack because i think that attack will be able to single-handedly hold down a large number of waves it's insurance basically uh i'm going to on this run it doesn't matter right now but Sometimes I play Potter out of order, by the way. This is to prove that it's not that big of a deal. Let's talk about this first. One advisor or two houses. You may ask yourself the question of which is better. And the answer to that question is entirely based on how you want to play this game. So advisor has the pen potential to be unbelievably strong. You could get accountant, 25% increased gold. You could get... Uh, settler, 25% increased population. You could get uh, Trumpeter, the banner ad advisor, and just like have a plan to win the game. You could get, you know, the, the possibilities are endless on the positives, but on the flip side, you could get Doomsday and lose the run. You could get Greedy and tank your economy. You could get, I don't know, Militia Leader and add in a garbage card. The variance is very high. Uh, when I talk it out like that, though, I think it might be a, like it's up to you. Houses are very stable, right? Eight more population plus two tax. This is going to generate you a lot of gold over the course of the run. Say the run lasts about 45 minutes, right? I'm not going to try to do nap back of the napkin math to explain how much money you're going to get off the house, but suffice it to say it's a decent amount. I believe that the houses are better for me because I prefer the stability. I think it's a lot more better for consistency. If you want to just go wild or you're going for slayers, you can take advisors and I think that's also acceptable. I almost talked myself into taking advisors there because the population doesn't really matter because I have attack to hold these early waves for me. And as you can see there, attack being a very strong card. Second chest, less important. Always check the card that you're offered. This is this is something like there's no reason for you to not check this card again. Don't take gold. Uh, I would not take leader level ups as this guy. I would only take leader levels up as the navigator and the military leader. Maybe the scientist. Uh, between the house and the card here, I'm actually gonna take the card. Let's talk about each card though. Let's let's just stay as in depth as I can make it here. So keep. I think this card is not very good. Uh, you're you're playing keep, which is one card in your hand, and discarding another card to draw two extra cards. I think that outside of maybe using this to like, maybe you could use this with reuse to cheat out something. Uh, the hypotheticals are hypotheticals, save that. Keep I don't love. I don't think it's worth it to take the card slot for this. Patrol, uh, if you watch the regular series, I have used Patrol a few times to bring my redraw cost down to zero. It's really strong if you can do that. However, uh, I'm not convinced that we can in this run. Our income is not popping off, and the 
number of cards in the deck is a little too high, I think, to make patrol work out. However, pillage. I think pillage is actually really good. At the end of the day, this card is worth, you know, 100 plus 90 all the way down to 20. Gold? Minus uh, 15 for each cast, but you get the point. And it really, like, the thing about it is it kickstarts your economy. A large portion of how you do in this game revolves around how you do in these first six waves, I would say. And as a result, I'm going to, I think that Pillage, every time that I've taken Pillage, it has become very strong. Like, every time that I've taken Pillage, it's worked out for me very, very well. There's, so, over the course of this run, there are going to be probably some conversation lines that I drop. If you want any further explanations or any more insight into why I do something, if I drop a thought because I have something that I deem more important pop up in the run, uh, feel free to ask it in the comments. I'll answer it to the best of my knowledge. This video should be going up uh, tomorrow afternoon sometime, I believe. So it'll be fresh in my mind if you have any questions. And if not, I'll just like, if you have a question and I don't, and it's been like a week since this video is released, just timestamp it and I'll let you know. This, this event, I could do like a full 30 minute talk through about, I feel like, but what it boils down to is I think that, as you can probably guess, my feelings are that once again, I don't want uh, if, if you want to win consistently in this game, you don't want variance. You want to keep things as consistent as you can. So you want the population from this event. You want, uh, I mean, basically just the population. That's all I really want. So, but we can, let's talk, I'll just talk about the three choices that we have. Maybe I'll make a full, like, dissertation on this, but probably not. The choices we have, it's, it's, uh, you know, if I talk it out, we can maybe find ourselves in a different position. It's never green. I'll just, uh, I'll just tell you, it's never green here. I would never willingly take green. I would never take the three cheese ads. Uh, random military card is variance, but in there's only a few cards that we could get from this that would be truly awful. So it's worth considering. However, I prefer to not put my military plans to variance. Advisor is similar to taking military card in that like sometimes it's awful, sometimes it's great. The minus 100 gold is whatever, I don't care. I think that given these three choices you take advisor because the variance. I think that A, the upper end, the high outcome is a lot better. Like if you get a good outcome it's like really 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 good. There's a lot of middling outcomes and even there's only two really adverse outcomes. Only two really big negatives. Yeah, Dancer is like a middle of the road, absolutely fine outcome. Uh, so given the choice here, we get to choose between a house, delete a card, and later level up. As the merchant, like I said, I don't respect his hero power. If you want, if you want to be technical in this over explanation, you can say that I should be using my hero power more. You're right, a hundred percent. But the amount of gold it generates you is very minute. It's not going to make or break your run. I just forget because I have. Br I just don't because I'm just busy spending, focusing on hitting the redraws. I've never really experimented with leveling up the Merchant's Leader ability since the nerfs. I don't really respect it. The card remove is going to be more important when I have my pillage finished out. I'm going to take the house. I think that taking a lot of houses is very strong, period, full stop. Uh, the thing that I actually don't like about doing deal is I don't like to deal when I have gather in my hand also. Events, you can make you can make a case if you don't if you want to argue against variance, you can make a case for never taking those events because some of those events are just detrimental. And if you don't take them then nothing happens. So for example, the main one that comes to mind is the event that makes you choose between losing uh, I think it's four tax and two population. A very minor downside, but a downside nonetheless. This mid-game portion, by the way, when we have 21 population and we're just kind of rolling here, this is where I often uh, zone out and start talking about something else because there's not a whole lot for me to tell you right now. I'm going to be playing my economy cards in the order that I stated, which is just play Potter and then play the cheeses as they roll out. I'm going to put my army out and keep it even on either side, whatever I can do. Uh, and then I'm going to play attack to help clear the waves. This event is... Unless you're going for a specific outcome, uh, you choose between they have my condolences and give them a proper burial. And I believe you can get to any outcome you can get off of burial rights off of give them a proper burial. 
Uh, alongside this, maybe I'll remember to do this. I should put my here's how the events pan out chart somewhere. Hopefully, I maybe will make it in a Google Doc that you can look at. Or maybe I'll just put it on the Steam Workshop. Hopefully I have that somewhere for you so you can see the events, how they link to each other, and what you can expect. But talking through this one just at face value and not thinking about any future event outcomes, I would say that the best pick here is almost always they have my condolences, followed by give them a proper burial if you're playing one of the characters who makes good use of their leader level, and then burial rights should only be taken if you're like, well, there's nothing for me to remove, so we're going to remove a card here. I'm going to remove Pillage. Pillage has done its work. It's it Maybe it feels like it was not a great uh, investment, however, it didn't cost me anything to put this in, and it generated me a decent amount of money. So I'm going to remove it now. I could theor like technically I'm missing out on uh, 15 gold and then five gold. I'm missing out on 20 gold by removing this now, but that's fine. And if you take that event, you can always land. Like if you take re remove one card there, you can always land in the uh, gain 40 population from the wave 20 and wave 28 events, which are very good outcomes, I believe. I think they're some of the best. From so from this position, uh, wave four. I have the choice to either build another house or delete a card. I'm going to start deleting cards here. I'm going to make the plunge. At some point in the run, you have to make the plunge, in my opinion. You don't have to. You can go through the run and never remove your cheeses. But removing one cheese, it's kind of like pulling out the last block that you know is going to topple the Jenga tower. When you take out your first cheese, the value of your other cheeses sinks dramatically. Sometimes on runs, it's better to remove Potter first instead of cheese because Potter only really generates you 33 gold, as the merchant it generates you 43 gold sometimes. But the amount of money you generate off of cheese, I could sit here and do the math out for you, but they're very comparable numbers, and at the end of the day, I, I think that starting the cheese removal process and getting it over with as fast as possible is good, because by the end of your run, you don't want cheese anymore. Take a look at the market here. I'm going to take the wall. The biggest benefit of the market here, well, let's talk through each option. We're, on, we're not on the coast. If we're on the coast, I would probably take fire station here. Fire station's cheap and it saves me some time while having to click. I think that hunt is not a worth card. I don't think that the economic bonus from hunt is worth taking. I don't like slinger outside of like maybe against spitters, but even then I think that guards is just better in every respect. Uh, gather, I feel like starting with is fine. However, adding more gathers feels like a waste of time. You only are real like it's it's net neutral, right? You it increases your hand size by one, but one of the cards in your hand is gather. So, you know, it, like you get to you get to draw an extra card off of it. I guess it's we it's the semantics of it are weird, but I never really feel good about adding more of this card. Then it comes down to wall versus house, and I think I'm I'm going to take the walls just because I want to expand faster. That's it. You only get one card from the merchant. Stop offering me slingers, please. This is, since I have a market and I just bought a wall, the other thing to point out is since I bought that wall, I don't feel pressured to buy a wall here. We can talk about these cards real quick as well. Vines is okay in certain circumstances, but this isn't one of them. Again, don't like slinger, don't want to add another militia, there's no reason. Repair, there's no need to have this right now. So the only cards that are even worth considering are Watchtower and Wall. However, Watchtower I don't like because I'm going to be building out. There's no reason to take this because it's going to become obsolete very quickly. But the only thing that's even worth considering here is the wall. I'm not even going to talk about the question mark card. However, as a result of having the market, I'm just going to refresh and we're going to hope for better cards. Uh, livestock is good. I have reasonable population. This is a strong enough card. Twenty. It only costs you one population. Nets you 70 gold after 20 seconds as long as you have a card to discard, which we always will. So yeah, livestock is a great economic choice. You can take cheese market here. It's okay. I could also consider assistance, and we could consider this run as maybe going towards skills. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily bad to do this. It op it opens. It's an option, right? That's what it is. It's not necessarily going to win me the run. However, it's an option. It's giving me a choice. Now, if I'm offered a lot of skills, I can set up an infinite off of this assistance. Assistance is a very strong card. If you don't know as well, if you play two stacks, the effect stacks. Sorry, if you play it two attacks, the effect stacks. 
Uh, this run, you can see though, I took assistance, or not assistance, I took attack early in the run, and my army has been uh, non-existent. Like, they have not, this is the, some of the first fighting they've done, because I'm able to kill everything. I'm going to use attack to clear this boss wave as well. Treasure chest number five, it's, we're getting to a point where uh, I'm just going to be taking houses as they're offered. The mining is too late, and I believe this wholeheartedly. Wave 5 mining is right on the cusp of too late. The thing is, if I see more minings, it's not too late. But if I don't see another mining, that card is dead. And like there, it's going to generate me very little money. Mining is strong when you get it early enough to power it up. I'm going to attack. And I'm, this is, you know, the semantics of using attack to kill a fat boy bosses. You can probably hear them in the background as long as I keep speaking. And I'm going to keep redrawing here, although we have reached the point, this is something I should talk about in a little more depth. When do you stop paying to redraw? I've talked about this a little bit in the regular series, but the essential... Essentially, just watch your money, is what I would say. When you're losing money from redrawing, that's when you need to stop. And like it's, it's very clear I had a lot more money than this before. Now, this treasure chest, the the thing that's sad here is that I didn't get offered an upgrade, because I think the upgrade is the interesting choice. Of the legendary cards here, I think that these legendary buildings are all very bad. There's no reason to take university. My leader ability is worthless, and this is 500 gold. Keep in mind, university is a building that is strong if it makes sense in your deck, if you're playing a lot of skills and have a useful hero power, like if you're the military leader. But this is a 500 gold investment. There is no world where I can take this right now. Temple, similarly, I don't have any soul. And this is a 300 gold investment. Sparrow Nest is worth considering, but the amount of value I'm going to get from this is very small, and it's a big investment in money. So most of the time the legendary card choice is bad because the cards on wave six are too expensive. I almost never see myself picking this unless it's a strong military unit. Or maybe investment if I want to go through that plan. Madame is an advisor that I don't like because I don't know what she does. I cannot tell you what the level chances of a high level advisor appearing means. Because I don't know what advisor rarity means. So I don't really feel like I would feel a great effect from this advisor. Therefore I'm skipping this. And at the end of the road we find territory expansion. Which is solid. It's two houses. It's a wall. It's very solid. Like you can't go wrong taking territory expansion. It's not a it's never gonna be a bad choice unless I don't know, like it costs you a lot of money, I guess, to put down uh, it's 188 gold to play those out, right? But this is this is where the run is going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to uh cause 140 gold. You can do a little quick math to figure out if you're earning enough money to Redraw, right? How much money am I making per time through the deck? And then how many times do I have to redraw to get through the whole deck? Put those two numbers together, and if you're making money at the end of it, you can keep spamming your redraws. If you're losing money, stop. Army composition, I should talk a little bit about. I haven't been offered a better frontline, but we are going to need to remove these militia. Uh, the only reason that I haven't struggled more is because I had attack. This is a very interesting shot. We're going to talk about this one for a moment because there's, uh, there's, I guess it's not that interesting because at the end of the day, this is always tax office, but let's talk through each, each choice anyway. I think bandit is very bad. I've, I've taken him on a number of occasions and ultimately the problem with bandit is he has less HP than militia. He doesn't make a good frontliner. It's like, it's very weird to spend your population like this and I don't like it. I will never take bandit again because every time I take him, I lose within like 10 waves. Uh, the tannery is a solid income building. This is a very strong building for your income. The market, I, if I didn't already have a market, this would be bought, but how would I buy this? I already have livestock, so I don't need another one. Guild office I've had no success with. I think that this building is not very good. So it's between the wall and the office, and at the end of the day, this is going to generate me a very large amount of money. This is a very strong, strong income building. And that's my that's my thoughts on the market there. It was actually less interesting than I thought because I still I didn't have an interesting choice there. Okay, this one this one these choices I guess the problem with Retropolis doing an over explained is that the choices come very fast. 
I'm gonna try and keep this video under like an hour and a half ideally, but this is gonna be a longer form video for sure. But there's a lot of choices that happen and I have to stop to explain them because if I don't, uh, like to, to keep my normal videos under 45 minutes, I, ha I just like kind of roll with the punches. But we have a lot of choices here. Uh, basically, the house, the card remove, or the card add. Uh, I'll very simple. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through the tier list here, right? Card add is always the first thing that I would want. Like this is this is the three. If I could choose, I would always choose these three options from a treasure chest. You always want to look at your card add. There are three good choices here. You can probably guess I'm going to take treasure hunter because treasure hunter is a very 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 strong unit. Very 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 strong. Uh, herb is also good, but I don't have units that are worth keeping alive, and Ambush is fine, but I have attack, which, like, it, it does Ambush's job a little better, because Ambush, it kind of, it just falls off, and attack falls off, but attack can be split between enemies how I see fit. The card remove is a good choice as well, if you really want to, because you ne I need to get these other two cheeses out, they're dead cards. However, the most important thing right now is establishing our army. I need military cards. My philosophy when it comes to winning a run of Retropolis is essentially, you need to solve three questions. How are you going to be able to draw and how, how are you going to be able to play your cards? Which means, how are you going to uh, afford them or have the options to play them, right? How are you going to be able to A, draw them, and B, play them? Are you going? How are you going to have the money or like the access to them, right? There's a lot of answers to this question. I'm phrasing it strangely, but at the, in most runs, it is just the money. I will I will finish that thought once I finish this thought. You see, this is this is how it goes though. I get interrupted on that line of reasoning with this one. I think that you never want to take I Wish for Wealth. Uh, random economy cards, I've talked this out a few times. They're mostly bad. Like, a lot of economy cards are very bad. So I'm going to take the Random Advisor because I'm willing to take the roll of the dice on the variance here, basically. Yeah, we got a weird one. Squire's a weird advisor. Uh, okay. I'm gonna look at this shop before I continue, right? So there's there's really only one thing to talk about here that I haven't already talked about. I, I should I should point out house is always a good buy. There's always there's there's never a bad time to add a house, even if you don't need the population plus one tax is good. Uh, walls are also always a good buy. Work is up to you if you have the patience to take this card. Taking work adds a lot of time onto your run if you're doing a like a fast deck because you can use work to, if you draw your cards well enough, if you've solved the question of how do I play my cards, if you can play work on demand, you can work a market for as many cards as you want. So if you have specific cards you want to fish out. Similarly, you can work a barracks for as much as you want, infinite upgrades, etc., etc. I'm not going to take it and I tend not to because unless I really, really am desperate to make the run work out, uh, there's other ways to get around it. However, if you want it, like it's a very, 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 very strong card. As long as you have a building to play it on also. Like we have a market here. If you have no buildings, obviously don't take this. Uh, the other card here is Missionary. Missionary, I have a really hard time telling you how good Missionary is because I don't know. It's really hard to gauge his effectiveness. However, I think he combos well with, like, Duckling Rider, for example. Units that spend a lot of time not getting hit. So, at the, uh, what am I going to do here, then? Am I going to take the wall in the house, or am I going to reroll? That's a close choice. Uh, I'm going to reroll, I think. Because my income is low. And I want to find something a little better. I didn't find anything particularly better. I didn't really expect to, but the loss was very low. I'm going to end up taking nothing from this shop, but we can talk about the rest of these cards, right? Repair we've talked about. Crossbow Red is a good midline unit. The problem that I'm going to face, the reason I'm not going to take any cards here, because you can make a strong choice for... No, there, there's no strong case for Crossbow Red. I have Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter already fills that slot. So there's there, none of these cards are good. Maybe experiments, but I don't really make good enough use of it. But the problem stopping me from really taking and experimenting with many of these cards here is I have no money. Uh, I'm going to use the key mindings here to really try. I want to attack and clear out some enemies. Playing Squire is going to hurt me because he's 104 gold. 
We'll look at the card ad. Shield Rat is very strong. Uh, very, very strong. Shield Rat is unbelievably strong. Like, this is uh, not the best anymore after the number of nerfs he's taken, but this is still one of your strongest choices for your frontline. Let's talk army composition for a moment here. Your army should be composed of two, two pieces. Your army needs to have a frontline unit and a damage dealer. Your frontline unit is just going to be your unit who tanks all of the enemy hits for you. Uh, Shield Rat, Guardian, Duckling Rider, whoever, like Militia with a lot of buffs. And then your damage dealing unit is going to vary based on your run. The most common one you're going to see is guards because you stack up a lot of guards. You give them a little, uh, a little attack boost however you want to. And that's the play, right? So sometimes your damage dealing units are going to be like, you're going to have guards with bannerets buffing them. This run, my damage dealing unit is going to be Treasure Hunter. My frontline can be Shield Rat. However, there is a strong alternative here in Smithy. Getting the option to upgrade all of my cards is really strong. Like these are, these are two extremely good choices. Medic is also here. I don't like Medic because Medic, despite all of my love for healing in this game, Medic does not heal itself very well. It has to run out. There's a lot of reasons I don't like Medic, but at the end of the day, uh, your Medics just die, and I think they provide very little value. So it comes down to Smithy versus Shield Rat here, and I believe I'm going to lean towards Smithy, but it is a very close choice. Smithy's expensive is the other problem I have with it. It's 265 gold to throw this down. However, I'm going to, I'm going to roll the dice on it. We're going to let the Squire chill for a minute or two. You can see, this this run, I may lose this run, and if I do lose this run, I don't know if I'm going to scrap it. Uh, it's hard to say if I should scrap it or not, but essentially, if I if I lose this run, I think, it, I think still there's a lot of valuable information in this episode. Uh, and I, I will do over-explained runs. I, I definitely feel as though I've said a lot of things that are worth hearing in this episode, so even if I lose this, I think it will see the light of day, but... Maybe not. I don't know. Hopefully we just win. Uh, let me get back to talking about what I have more or less uh, found myself referring to as the triangle. Uh, call it, I'll call it the triangle. The pyramid, however you want to look at it. The three points to a winning run of Slay the Spire. There's three things you need to win one of these, a run of the, or this isn't Slay the Spire. Three, the three points to win a run of Ratropolis. You need to solve how you're going to play your cards, which I already covered. You need to solve how you're going to uh, have your population, like what's your what's your population plan, and you need to solve what's your uh, defense plan. So I worded these strangely, but the most typical answer to these three questions, I'm going to talk about this event after I finish this thought. The, the most typical answer to these three questions are A, some form of strong economy cards, mining, enough labor cards, uh, high taxes and tax cards, Things like that, right? Or you can do some more unconventional things, patrol my redraw costs down to zero and then just make enough money to play my cards, reduce card costs through navigator power, things like that. But for the most part, it's just going to be strong economy cards that let you gain money faster than you spend it. Question two is population. The answer to this question is often just taking a lot of houses. You can get the slum event if you don't need to rely on your taxes. You can use warrens, you can use breed, you can use immigration, things like that. And then option three is arguably the most important option. What's your plan of defense? In this run, my plan of defense is supplementing my relatively weak army currently of militia guards and treasure hunter, but I can't play a lot of treasure hunters because I don't have access to playing them right now because my income is too low. I'm supplementing that army though with attack to kill off the priority targets. Talk about this one for a moment here. 50% lower accuracy on ranged attacks is scary because we're about to face a boss so i'm going to pay 160 something gold to not face that 100 and 160 is that right 100 and am i insane i think i am i don't know why i can't what is half of 140 there we go i figured it out wow <laughs> i'm sorry i had a moment where i forgot how to divide by two anyway uh this event this is the event order that you'll see if you take remove one card on wave four. Uh, I take, I'll have the people decide on that. Because I'll have the people decide on that leads to better future waves. Arrest this coward is good if you have a very strong standing army that you don't think you'll lose. If you have a lot of guards with strong frontline, for example, 
Uh, and then you'll be one of my closest advisors. I don't like this one because it leads to a worse ending, basically. And I sometimes... Oh my god, what a blessing. <laughs> Some, sometimes, though, you'll find yourself... Uh, Based, like, with, sometimes not getting the advisor is better. That's what I'm trying to say. And the later choices are good. However, Shieldmaster is a great outcome. We have a strong frontline unit now to tank for us. Uh, this this one is a choice between build a house or delete a card. Deleting cards in indirectly leads closer to my goal of having a stable economy because it's going to remove some of the cards that are worthless from the deck right now. The cards that don't generate me any money. I am probably going to need to pay to redraw on this wave to be able to survive it. That's fine. Another thing you can do to live through tough waves is just save up money and then pay to redraw in the in the moment that you need to. And I need to now. I'm going to I'm just going to try and kill off. This is this is fast click mode where I just click as fast as I can. I need to just focus on killing off the bosses. My treasure hunters have given me a chest. Treasure Hunters giving you chests are good. In this case, I'm going to take the gold because the boss is here. These, none of these cards are game changing. And if I don't redraw fast, I'm going to be killed. I should have played Livestock there, yes. Uh, but, you know, when, when things get heated in this game, you don't really have time to think everything through. And it's not too heated because my Shield Rat Advisor is holding it down. Like, the Shield Master is going to make Shield Rat extremely tanky. Let's talk about these these options. I don't like Gladiator because I don't like Berserker, so I will probably never pick this advisor willingly. So we just look at the legendary card, we ask ourselves, are any of these worth it? Public Bath is a building that is always worth it. This, this building generates you a lot of time, and in this game, the more time you have, the more time, the more time you have. <laughs> I mean, as dumb as that is, like that's really what it comes down to. Public Bath gives you five seconds per wave. It adds uh, like a full, 100 seconds to this run, right? That's two minutes of time, nearly. I'm not going to take it, however, for sake of brevity. And I also think that the double, the two houses are going to be helpful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of speed this one along a little bit from here on out, right? We're coming up on, uh, we're, we're coming up on what would be closing in on the end of the run in a normal episode, and we're at the end of wave 10. But I feel like... This, I, what I should do uh, is actually write a script. So this episode has been just kind of a, here's what I'm thinking off the top as things go. However, I think I'm going to, hmm. I'm not gonna scrap this episode. No matter what happens, I'm not gonna let this one go. I'm gonna take Steel here. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't talk about that merchant very much. I will go back to him and talk to him a little more. However, I wanted to open this one up to see if there was anything worth considering here. I'm going to take Steel. I have assistance in the deck. I'm going to answer the question of how am I going to play my cards? How am I going to afford to play my cards with a Steel Assistance Loop? Steel Assistance Loops are very, very easy to win the game off of. Basically, you want the, the very quick rundown here is I have 216 gold to work with. Uh, gather an assistance. I already have these cards. There's no reason to take them. I don't want to throw down more walls right now because this is money that I don't have and I can't even afford these cards and they're not good. Hog Thrower isn't very good. You can consider Shoe Market as the only thing that I would even think about here. I could refresh, but I mean, I will refresh because there's no reason not to. Ah, and I did get a building worth taking. Wow, I'm really glad I did that because this is, this is a reason why if you're not going to take anything from here, you should always refresh. You may find something you are going to really want. I really want mine. Mine helps you get an infinite off of the ground very, very easily. It is going to... Because when basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to steal assistance and then I'm just going to mine the steel back to draw it and play it. The It doesn't look like I can do an infinite because I have more than 10 cards. Max hand size is 10. However, uh, I can because I have like four cards that are single use. I'm going to I'm going to assist my units here as well when I have attack in hand at the start of a wave. It's good to do that if you have skills unless one of the skills that you're doing that with is shock because then you're just going to kill all your units. 
Uh, you may notice, I, I took a moment there to count the number of walls on either side. You lose all your gold when you put down your fourth wall in either direction. So I'll, uh, I'll illustrate that because it's a little strange to talk about. Talk about these cards, right? I don't like airstrike. Uh, policy is not very good and hunt is not very good. I don't like any of these cards, so I'm not going to pick them. I should, a little bit, of, a little bit of insight. Why policy is going to have to hit three cards to become worth it, and it doesn't. It generates you gold in a weird way. I don't like it necessarily, so I just don't take it. Hunt doesn't generate you much money. It's very, very little, even in the dense waves. Like it generates you some money then, but I don't like relying on bounty for income because you want to be able to make money between waves, not just on waves. And I just have trouble hitting enemies with airstrike because I'm bad with it. Uh, I'm not gonna delete a card here. I'm gonna delete a card here actually. I'm going to remove cheese. I was going to take the house. You can take the house there as well. Either option is worth. But let me let me illustrate for you, right? One wall, two wall, three walls. When I put another wall down, we'll get the negative event on, like, on that side. So I counted this side. We had one, two. Now I have three walls. The next wall that I put down, if I put down another wall, will trigger the event that causes you to have to choose between losing all your gold, uh... Losing 5 seconds on wave period and losing 10 population, all of which would be very bad right now. I'm trying to get off the ground. I'm going to play the smithy right now because all we need to do is get our steel assistance loop rolling and then we win the game. Like, it's as simple as that. It's hard to get there though. I'm going to play gather. That's, it's dire, but I'm going to play gather. I'm just going to attack to help out. I, I'm going to, for the next episode of this in depth, which I will probably put up uh tomorrow for you uh two days from now for me i'm going to do a bit more of a focus i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna write up like a the points i want to hit on sort of thing i guess i feel like let's see here i'm not i'm not talking through every single choice right because like I, how many times can i tell you i don't like slinger Right, you see a lot of redundant choices in this game. Emergency is another card you can go infinite with, but it's a more expensive infinite than steel. And I already have steel, so we're not going to take that. I'm never going to take leader level up, so I'm just going to take the house. You could also take the house from the card ad if you wanted to. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> if, you, if you really want to, you can. Uh, this, this, oh my god, this event is really strong. This, is, this event lets you do infinites as well. If you're struggling to get an infinite off the ground, this uh, Seeds from the World Tree event will land. So this boss is going to be... I don't know what this boss is going to be, actually. Here we are. I just need, I need to make sure I play the Squire out so that he's not in the deck, and now I have my infinite set up to go here. Just click the seeds as they fall, and we will get all ten of our cards in hand, and then I will illustrate for you the Steel Infinite. Ah, oh, this is the Weasel Necromancer, of course. Okay, so the Steel Infinite. I need to actually make some moves here because I'm going to die. I'm actually so the problem is time doesn't pass when I pause the game, right? Which is good, but it's also bad. Uh, essentially, if I don't, my my income is bad right now. However, we can make it work. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Steel to Play a single card infinitely. Which card am I going to play infinitely here? I'm going to play attack infinitely to save my life. And then we're just going to we're going to kill the boss through that, right? Because otherwise I'm going to be killed. There is no doubt in my mind that this will be the end if I don't do this. It's it's not my favorite way to defeat this boss. However, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, so given given these choices, right? This is a very simple one. I never want I don't want to add a card right now. It's very delicate. I only have space i don't have space for another card to keep my and also the ability to keep my infinite going as a result i'm not going to take either of those i'm just going to take a card upgrade card upgrades are rare and you have to ask yourself which cards are worth upgrading when you're doing an infinite i always think it's correct to upgrade whichever card you're using to do your infinite so in this case steel upgrading steel allows me to play an extra two cards per time around right or an extra card per time around so i can play like potter plus a military card plus steel with steel it only costs 18 to play it, so it's very, very easy to make money off of steel. I'm gaining 100 gold every time I play Potter. It only costs me uh, 35 gold to play both these cards. So I'm just going to do that to generate myself a little money, and then I'm going to power out my military. This military's DPS plan is going to be Treasure Hunter, as I said earlier, and its frontline plan is going to be Shield Rat. And with the the treasure hunters are also going to generate me a lot of money. 
as I've said, I don't want to add any cards right now, therefore we're going to take money, and I think that that's fine, I'm not losing anything. This shop, again, and again and again, I'm gonna say it and say it and say it, I don't want to add any cards right now. It's very delicate that I keep the infinite going, it's going to win me this run, however, if I drop this infinite, I will probably fall flat on my face. We're gonna keep in the guards as well. And I'm going to take card removal. I don't even need to look at those. I said you probably always want to look at the card ad. This is a case where they're, they cannot offer me a card that is worth taking here. Smithy upgrades. Uh, you want to upgrade your frontline units probably pretty quick. I mean, you do. The The thing is with Smithy, I'm going to add as many cards. Or I'm going to upgrade all of these cards eventually. It's just the order. This event I always take... I'm going to take a rest both for multiple reasons here. I take a rest both because it lands you the better ending where you get the population. You also get the card remove. The advisor is variance. If it adds me a card, it could be bad. But also, as we saw earlier, the variance is good sometimes. It gave me my frontline plan. However, I'm just going to remove the old frontline plan of militia here. And now I can start to take more cards if I want to. Even just buildings are fine. Uh, do I want to? No, nah, not really. Uh, I'm going to keep removing because what I'm doing now is I'm making sure that if I drop the infinite, I can get it back. And I need to even out my army. This is this is another important thing to make sure you do. Don't focus entirely on one side like I have a tendency to. Make sure that you are strong on either side so that if you... You know, because you can have the enemy waves stack up on one side repeatedly and then all of a sudden, oops, I only have two units on the right side. Guess we die. I'm probably not going to expand past these three walls because, as you can see, I haven't added a whole lot of buildings. There's no reason to. We're going to take a look at the market now. I didn't just ignore the market because I forgot it was there. I ignored the market because I could not afford to take anything. I couldn't add cards. I didn't have any money, all of that. So let's talk about these cards. It's a very simple choice here. Uh, you you kind of you knock it out real quick here. I don't like Hog Thrower. I, can't, I don't feel like adding another wall. I don't want to because I don't want to lose my gold, but it's not the end of the world if I do. Uh, I don't particularly... I don't need Tan. This is a card uh, card draw card. I don't need Pike Rat. I already have that plan settled. I don't need March because I don't need March. I'm not doing a Duckling Rider Infinite. Festival, I have no labor cards. Therefore, we take Graveyard, which is just going to generate me some free population over the course of the run. And when I said that I was going to over-explain everything in this run, I don't know if I actually said that, but that was the imp imp intention is like I'm going to walk you through every aspect of my choice making here. This is a run that has a lot of choices and they are important to stack up correctly. From here on out, uh, unless I see a card that is incredible in here, which Fire Station, Smuggle, and Graveyard are, bo are all three okay, the better choice is going to be House, almost always, because Oh shit, what the fuck? I got two treasure chests? Thank you, treasure hunter. Again, it's just house. What? Oh my god, what is happening? What just happened to me? <laughs> okay, so uh, let me pause here. This is an important thing to talk about as well. Uh, sometimes you can drop your infinite if this happens. I played Steel and then three cards got added to my deck before the steel triggered, which can happen. I added two houses and it was fine. I didn't account for the bachelor finishing. This is why you hold on to assistance so that if this happens, you can stay alive. I got three tread. What an insane bout of luck. Okay. Uh, so unpause, play out the houses real quick. Uh, play the attack as you realize, but also playing the attack means that I'll draw assistance. I need to take these. I'm probably just going to take three houses here if it's offered. You can also remove a card here. Removing Potter is uh, questionable. I'm going to take House. I'm going to take House. And I did not get a third House. I'm going to delete Attack. Attack has outlived its usefulness. Essentially, from this position, I'm going to take every House they offer me because all I need to do to win this run from here on is have the population to play out like 20 Shield Rats and 10 Treasure Hunters. As you saw just now, uh, Treasure Hunter generates you a lot of value if you have a large number of them. Every time it kills a unit, it gives you a 5% chance to get something, and and that something is a treasure chest. So now, also now, I've dropped myself down to six cards. Even if I 
uh, lose my infinite now, I don't have to do anything special to get it back. I can remove assistance even. From here on though, it's very straightforward. I, I'm trying to- I'm just trying to gauge- holy fuck these guys they summon have a lot of HP. Look at how much health he has. Oh, is he immune to death from that guy? You see that little green thing above his head? I'm learning the mechanics of this map still, I should point out. Did you see that guy tank a thousand damage though? Because that's what I just witnessed. That's a little concerning. I'm gonna have to spend- I don't know how that one works entirely. Uh, okay. Wow. We, again, three treasure chests are stacked up here. Let's talk these ones through. Uh, unless there's a really good legendary card here, which bizarre is okay. I'm just gonna take the card upgrade. I don't want to take territory expansion. I don't want to lose... Uh, although I should I should have actually taken territory expansion there if I would thought it out a little further. I should just lose my gold. I only have $300 here. My income is bad still, I should, I should say. My income is not great. I'm still checking these for a good income card. However, we can also just have our income be through the high population and tax office. Our income, our income needs that are also very low in this run. I'm going to upgrade with Smithy one of the houses because these cards are not worth upgrading at all. My income needs are very low on this run though. There is no pressing concern for my income. All I need to do, because it only cost me 18 gold to play and draw the card, or to draw cards right now, instead of like two or 300. Uh, I'm going to take the house here, and I'm going to take the wall just to lose my gold. Because I need to get it over with, so I stop waiting to get it done. But no, all we need to do here is let the tax office do its job, right? We're getting 42 gold per uh, five seconds, which is enough gold to feel confident. I'm gonna take gold here though, I think. No, I'm gonna take removal. I'm gonna remove assistance. Even if I drop my combo somehow, which I literally can't, I only have five cards in the deck, uh, it's fine. Another, another good point being made here, when you have high movement speed, sometimes this will happen to you. Uh, experiments is very good. I, I've kind of stopped explaining every single card choice because I want to speed this video up. You can kind of see though, uh, there's not a whole lot of choices that are important at this point. We've read, like I said, all of the all of the choices you make in the first like six waves extrapolate out to a victory more or less. And you know, in this case, it's a little bit more like the first ten to fifteen waves. But we have reached this run is one from this position. I'm going to take experiments because experiments plus steel is a very free way to make your money. Our guards here are worthless because our units are dumb. I'm going to play our fourth wall. I'm going to play experiments. I'm going to lose my gold. This event I should talk a little bit about, right? Essentially, I never think it's right to take minus 10 population. I think that this is always wrong. Outside of like, well, I already have burst shock. I don't need population whatsoever. My plan is skills. I would never take this. Even in that case, I think it might be bad. This is a horrible choice almost always. Enemy wave period is fine if you're strong. Like, if you feel like you can hold these waves no problem, you can just take this. I'm going- I typically think you should just take lose all gold. And I also- I timed this out, right? Uh, so that I would lose my gold, and then I would have the choice to get gold from the wave ending. However, I'm going to take the house because I have 40 tax and then the experiment's running. I'm not losing anything here by uh, taking that house. I can t afford it. I'm, I'm gonna click this event, but it may be bad. This one, this event, the, back to basics. Again, you never take random economy card. The problem with talking out every event is I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but you know, that's how it goes. Uh, I like taking the random building card because even if it's a bad building, it's still just you throw it out there. Yeah, and sometimes you get a very good building. However, I'm not going to play this immediately because I'm going to wait to upgrade it. As you can see though, we've more or less... Uh, we, we have found ourselves in a winning position. There is no doubt in my mind that we are going to win this run from this point on. And... Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think that this run is a great look at how your decisions in the early game will shape your mid to late game. You just, you, and, and also what you look for to have your run win for you, right? Especially when you get offered Treasure Hunter. 
the the big thing about doing a steel infinite like i'm doing is you need to have the options to remove cards that you're not going to use which i'm going to do i didn't look at my card option there but the options are coming very fast i'm going to take arm because it's silly this isn't necessary this is we've reached a this is a choice that i did not need to make however uh spamming experiments arm steel as an infinite to give yourself a very strong shield rat is a reasonable play and you may look at this and you may go, ah, oh, well, what, what are you going to do if you can't do an infinite? And yeah, I mean, sure, you're not always going to be able to do an infinite. However, uh, this, this run isn't so much how to win in every single circumstance whatsoever. That's not what the idea behind this video is. The idea behind this video is just showing you step by step the decisions I take to land myself with a victory on this run and i'll do a few of these videos where you know if i do enough of these videos eventually i'm not going to have a steel infinite and eventually if i do enough of these videos i'm going to over explain myself into a loss uh so let's I'll talk this one through before you real quick right none of these cards are good i don't need markets at this point i don't like you can take it but i don't need it i have why don't i need market let's talk about that why don't i need to add cards i have all of the cards i need to win the game in my hand I don't need anything else other than a few more population, maybe. March and Fishery, same reason. I don't need these cards. You can take March if you want it, right? It's fine. It, it, it's maybe better, but I don't care. It's Clutter, also. Leader level up does nothing. I'm never pressing this button. Therefore, I'm just going to take gold. There's no reason not to take gold. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to, I need to, right now, there are a few cards I would take, though, to be fair. Like, I should be maybe searching to fish for things like reuse, because reuse would make this a little bit, uh, cleaner. Other, but if I don't see any other option, I'm just going to take and use these houses, right? Upgrading the apartment gives you a lot of population. It gives you 15 for that space, which is good. Again... Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop uh, telling you every single choice here like this because there's no reason for me to. From this point on, we have won the run. You hopefully have gotten the value out of this that you can. I'm just gonna play this one to its completion. There is no doubt in my mind that I will win this run. There is, this, this is a non. No, this is a good choice. Uh, I again, don't take leader level up here. So this is a no-brainer. I'm gonna take upgrade a unit. Which side do I throw royal guard down on? It doesn't matter. Uh, this shop, I'm going to take tax office for sure, and I'll take the wall. And if, if I'm not refreshing, I will take tannery as well. The only reason not to is because it makes me drop my infinite, quote unquote, but that's what the mine is here for, right? It's good that I did that so I can illustrate why you take mine, even though I haven't used it ever. I'm not going to worry about upgrading any of these buildings. Monastery is just insurance in case I make a mistake. This is the boss wave, and I didn't really prepare myself for it. However... Uh, I don't think I'm in any danger, right? I can play out these units very fast. We can find ourselves fine in terms of defense. You can you can kind of get an idea for the flow here, right? Hopefully. The only thing that I would be interested in adding in now is a form of healing also. I should point that out. Any If I'm offered an herb, any first aid, things like that, any of those would be added to this deck without hesitation. Because, you know... And here we are at the Triumph. The Wave 20 event, I think, is the most important event. I think that uh, getting this event to give you something good is important. This is the event that directly indicates what you're going to get at your Wave 27, 28 ending. I'm going to take I Only Carry Out the Will of the People, plus 20 Radisson. It's really solid. Upgrades, eh. I will check the Legendary card, but I'm just going to upgrade for Arm, just because it makes it a little better. The choices I'm- but none of these choices I'm making matter, right? These are very small choices that, at the end of the day, with what I have here, they will not make a difference. I'll take Squire just because... symmetry, honestly. And you, there's no- there's no golden bullet here for like, oh, well, how many times should I arm before I throw a unit out there? I'm not, like, doing any sort of crazy calculations or anything like that. And I would like to point out as well, in this run, if you had a... There's another way... a different economy plan, for example, here. My economy plan here is experiments plus steel. However, your economy plan here could also be something like, if you had gotten a mining early on, you could just be paying to redraw. 
or high taxes if I had collect here, for example, would be another option. It's not so much a matter of making sure that you uh, can do an infinite off of it, but it is a matter of removing cards that are bad, like cards that are actively bad for you, such as cheese is actively bad, such as potter is bad, because they are detrimental, they blow it out your deck, and there's no reason to have them. From this point on, like, I'm going to just, I'm going to put down one strong, strong unit that I, like, arm. I'm going to arm up one set of two and then put them out there, and then otherwise we're just going to power out a bunch of units, right? All we need to do from this point on is have a lot of units. The desert, the new thing that they did in the recent update for the desert is they made these units have a lot more HP, but you fight a lot less of them. Need to be on my toes, but, you know. There's nothing to remove, there's no reason. All, is, all it is is houses from here on out, and I search these for population answers. Even though I don't need population answers, I didn't take... Uh, there was something in the top right there that I didn't take that I could have... Oh, graveyard. I didn't take graveyard because I think that the house... The, the difference is very minor, and I would rather have four population now than maybe six population spread out over the course of, like, however long. What I should actually be doing here, I'm doing this wrong. Again, uh, this this order, like the, the fact that I made this slightly different out change, like th this isn't good. The way you should be doing this is the way I'm doing it now, which is you should arm and play a unit and then steal. Instead of play two and, and steal, arm, play a unit, steal. Power up one and then power up the other, right? Because I'm getting a bunch of, what are these, 890s? Yeah, a bunch of 890s, and then I'm going to also get one very strong treasure hunter out of this. And now I need to do the same thing on this side. But no, just this run from here on out, like I said, it was very clear to me that this run was a win. But... Th there's not a whole lot left for me to tell you, basically. I have more or less said all I need to say. I'm going to take houses... And we're going to play our population out. 140 population of almost any unit will lead you to a victory, I would like to point out. any Almost any unit composition, if you have 100 and... I'm going to end this with 160 population. I will refresh in case I see something very strong here. However, oh yeah, almost missed the herb. Very good. So I want to keep probably like six population free to be uh, herbing. But pretty much any composition, if I had this much population in it, uh, would win. The only thing is, like, you can't win the game with... What would this be? This would be 45... This would be 50 militia. I don't think you would be able to make it through with 50 militia. However, maybe. Like, maybe, maybe. Almost... I, I didn't drop the infinite there. I just uh, misplayed slightly. The herb is just going to serve to keep those big units that I've been building up alive. I don't know what this guy does, by the way. Because though every time that I face this boss, I can't give you any insight into what he does, because every time I face him, he just dies too quickly. I read the description of him in a recent episode, but I do not actually know effectively if he's worth being afraid of or not. Collect. I could take Collect here. I, I'm going to take Collect here just to illustrate that if you have high tax, it's a very strong card. I don't need this, however. Uh, by the way, this this is a very important event. If you see Civic Demands, I think this event is very important to not mess up because here's how it goes. You either take, I'll open a Parliament, and you get a good ending, or you take Haha Not Anymore, and you get a very bad ending. Haha Not Anymore leads you to the ending that gives you plus 60 seconds on your leader ability, which isn't bad outright. However, if I grab my chart here that I have to my side, I will tell you that the rewards for that event are bad. The rewards for that event are plus three random military units or plus two card draw. C plus two card draw you can say is worth, maybe. If you have a run where plus two card draw is the way to go, then you can go for that. However, taking upgrade one card is going to give me A, it's a better outcome, and B, like getting the random legendary card is not good. Random legendary cards are not good. And B, uh, upgrading a card is typically better, but also you get plus 20 population, or I think you can up raise tax as well. Uh, I, this one, 
I'm not going to take territory expansion. I mean, I'm, I guess I am going to take territory expansion because I can I can fix it with mining, right? It's fine. If I didn't have mining, I couldn't do that. I, I'm still getting used to taking mining in these runs, uh, which is why it's like, oh, I'm a little, little leery of it. Nothing here. Like, uh, you can take tavern. I'm just going to speed this run along a little bit. We're, I'm going to illustrate for you how fast collect makes you money if you have the population for it. We can talk a little bit about collect. Collect costs you one population. It nets you money because... So you get gold equal to 15 times your current tax. But then you freeze income for 30 seconds. So you get 15 times your tax, but then you lose 6 times your tax. However, uh, you're also spending one population on it. But as you can see, if you have high tax, if you had raised tax, you could also do this very strongly. You get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of money very quickly off of collect. You can combo this with a raise tax if you have lower tax to jump your taxes up to a very high number very quickly. And then like you land the one, right? I had a run recently where my income was doomed. I had no money whatsoever. And then I had, I got one, I got raise tax to get me up to like 300, just barely. And then I got off one collect on that 300 and got 3000 gold and then my income snowballed from there. It's a very strong card if you're if you're focusing on taxes is what I'm trying to get across. Corruption not so good. Market don't need relic. It's money, but I don't need it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove collect for now because I I just wanted to illustrate that I guess. There was no reason for me to take it because my income is already settled, right? Um, as long as you're not spending money faster than you're making it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not being super even on which side I'm arming up and which side I'm not, but it, it doesn't really matter because I I could probably, realistically, the only thing that would stop me from winning this game if I got up and walked away from the computer right now is I would not click the events, right? That's it. That's all that's going to stop me from winning from this. We've won this run and I am certain of it. I believe I might fight the Desert Fox though, which uh, hits on both sides, so I need to make sure that we're strong on both sides. I'm just going to play out my population and then I'm going to kick my feet up and relax. Hopefully hopefully you found this video helpful, interesting. Uh, let me know, right? Let me know. I This is something new that I'm trying out, so your feedback is greatly appreciated here. Like, very, very much so. I'm going to I'm going to be a little more focused in the next video on what I want to talk through more or less. I feel like I I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this video, I guess. Because I kind of was like, "Oh, well, I need to explain some of the principles and things like that, right?" Uh I don't know. Cuz I don't know. I feel like I don't know if I have explained the principles in depth well enough. Uh, again, like like I said, I, I'm not going to talk you through any more card choices here because we've reached a point in this run where my card choices no longer matter. It does not matter. I, I talked through the crucial part and that's all I really wanted to do, right? I talked you through, if you follow, basically, if you don't have a winning plan by this point in the run, you're probably going to die anyway. That's That's my opinion. No, I mean, if you don't have a plan by this point in the run, you you die. Like, if you don't have a plan by this point in the run, you did not make it to this point in the run. This point in the run is like 20 minutes into your new run. I'm just gonna even out the sides, and then all I need to do now, yeah, there's. I'm not. Even, I'm not gonna play any more units. We're just gonna play out an herb. We're gonna play out two herbs at the start. At the, two herbs at the start of every wave, and I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk a little bit about fundamentals here, I guess. You know, it's it's an hour and a half, or an hour and ten minutes into the video. I should probably be talking about these a lot earlier, but... Oh well. I'm not gonna take anything here. I mean, yeah, there's literally nothing for me to take here. I can't upgrade a card. Sentries is not worth it. It's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna even out. Like, when I lose units, I'm gonna replace them. That's the other thing. And, like, there's things I could be doing, sure. I could be arming, I could be doing things like that. It doesn't matter. So let's do let's do a little retrospective on this run to figure out uh, how did I win this run, right? Let's uh, what are the key decisions? Well, the key decision really was just taking steel, right? You and it wasn't steel is the card access plan in this run. 
Steel plus assistance is card access. I took assistance as a perspective pick in case I ended up in a position where I needed it. And I did need it. I don't love doing these runs because I think that they get very boring very quickly. However, uh, I'm, I'll take... Uh, for the purposes of, like, showing off that this is something you can do to win consistently, uh, you know. Basically, if you're wondering, man, how can I win the game? I don't understand. This is, an, this is a great option. Take steel, get an infinite, remove a lot of cards. Uh, I'm just going to take money here. Lottery is another tax card you can take if you feel lucky. And that's all I'll say about it in that one. Uh, lottery is another tax card you can take if you feel lucky. Uh, improved construction standards. Now I'm going to take the plus 20 population. And, and I didn't do anything like crazy or game-breaking here to get to 180 population, by the way. This is, this is the big thing. If you follow... Like, if you follow the choice path that I did, more or less, like, there's obviously you may not get offered as many houses as I did. You may not take as many uh, territory expansions because you get offered something a little better. I don't know. But you can follow the path I took in terms of events, and you'll find yourself with at least 40 population at this point. Like, 40 ad population. And then, you know, just prioritize throwing in a few... Uh, uh, options here and there, right? Like I did. Throw in houses when there's nothing better. Throw in houses when there's maybe a contentious pick. Grab any any population buildings you see just to give yourself... Like, it, it's, it's not hard to solve your population plan, I guess, is what I'm trying to uh, impart on you here. Now... Uh, it, like... The the mining choice was important to look at, I guess, as well. I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to give you a like a post mortem on this run, as as we take it home here. But there really there isn't a whole lot to say, because it is just a steel infinite. If you get a steel infinite, uh, you will almost always become cash flow positive. You'll make more money than you expend on it. I'm like I'm not gonna take anything. There's no reason to. Pretty much any card that you infinite with steel will make you money. I got a little lucky in that I got the Seeds of the World Tree event. The run was falling apart up until that moment, I will say. And that's fine, right? You can, like, as long as you're not dead, just if you keep fighting, you can find yourself with a win like I have here. Now watching these guys throw bombs into my stack of units with no recourse. Don't love that. But... This is this has been a bit of a more in-depth look. Uh, like I said, I'll I'll have a bit more of a. Uh... Although maybe I won't have more of a script. I always ignore that event because it's very confusing and I don't know what I would want. I don't know. the The fundamentals of this game are so, and it's it's hard for me to even say like, well, what are the fundamentals of this game? Because. It's not it's not as simple as I once thought it was of just outlining... Well, I'll outline it like this. What's your plan for your economy? What's your plan for your defense? What's your plan for your population? And answer those three questions, and we will find it. What are the answers in this one? My economy plan is steel. That, that card gives me economy. Is this the spider? Oh, this is the spider. No? It is the spider. Okay. My economy plan was just to get steel, because steel has such a low cost associated with it that it generates me money with almost any card I play with it. I had Potter to start out with, and then I picked up Experiments, and then I picked up, uh... No, that was it. But your economy plans may vary. What was my defense plan? I got Treasure Hunter, and I was going to stack up Treasure Hunter as my damage dealer, and then the answer to the... Uh, frontline plan came in the form of shield master so that was my defense plan and then since I have that defense plan what was my population plan well just take a lot of houses basically take every house I get offered and upgrade the apartments that I'm offered take get graveyards uh, get houses extra from treasure hunters things like that right so I did have a bonus a boost in my population through the treasure hunters giving me extra treasure chests right that's a fair point that I didn't consider but it just comes with the treasure hunter for you. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. If you watched this whole hour and 15 minute uh, thing, dude, hell yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you 
Uh, if you enjoyed this, please let me know. Leave me a comment. This is the start of something new. If you find this helpful, and like, you know, if you find some success with this, if this helped you understand the game a little bit better, yeah, let me know. Like, it would really mean a lot to me if you were to say like, hey, thanks a lot. Because, you know, it's not like I, I didn't put a ton of effort into this, right? I... But I also did, right? What am I talking about at this point? I don't know. It's an hour and 15 minutes of just straight recording Retropolis Fundamentals and getting my train of thought interrupted by every single event that pops up. It's a hard game to really talk out every single choice while also talking fundamentals, right? The next, the, the future videos in this series are just going to be me talking through every single choice I make that is important, I think. That's, that's what I'm going to do. And this is going to be kind of like a, a series that runs parallel for a few episodes to my uh, Retropolis regular series where I just kind of bullshit and don't talk too much about the game. Because, you know, I think that this isn't something I want to do long term, right? This isn't the sort of content that I want to make as a long form. Like, this isn't how I want to play my Retropolis runs always. However, I think that these runs are... Like, playing a run like this is good for the educational side, right? If you want to learn a thing or two about how you can find yourself winning the game, uh, these videos may help you. If they did, let me know. And I'm going to stop uh, this outro here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of this, which I don't know when will be. Probably tomorrow. Uh, have a good one. Farewell.